This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is the Hasselblad X2D 100C. We're gonna be talking about some of its new features, why I am still in love with this camera. We're gonna take some pictures and then compare it a little bit to the Fuji GFX 100S. So what is a medium format camera? Well, for a full explanation, I did make a video on this a few years ago, and that'll be linked in the cards up here and in the description box below, but a brief summary of this camera. So it is a 100 megapixel medium format mirrorless sensor. So what that means is that the sensor is massive. It's actually 70% larger than a 35 millimeter sensor on a Sony or a Canon, for example. Now, what that allows you to do is capture more light and more detail. With the Hasselblad X2D 100C, it has 15 stops of dynamic range and 16-bit color. Something we absolutely have to talk about is the design of this camera. It is a beautiful body. The lenses are beautiful. I, I love the little touch of orange. I can't help it. It feels premium to shoot with. It is made of metal. It is made with aluminum. Every little side compartment, I don't know why there are two when this clearly could have been one, but that's, that's for another day. They sit completely flat on the side of the camera. The grip is solid. I have lots of room for my hand to sit. It has a super minimal design, massive screen on the back. The screen actually does tilt now, which is really nice. Minimal buttons. It's great. It feels expensive. It looks beautiful. I love shooting with it. And you do want a camera that you enjoy shooting with at the end of the day. That means you're going to reach for it more. So definitely one big plus for this camera. The new lenses also feel really nice here can just tuck that in when you're not shooting with manual focus. There is a custom button setting where you can change what this inside focus ring does. I mean, most people have it set per aperture, but you can set it to essentially whatever you want, whatever is convenient for you. So that's a really cool feature about these lenses. In terms of connectivity, you do have your USB-C port here. The one thing that I do miss about this body is it doesn't have a D-pad and it doesn't have any kind of joystick to move my focus. So I do miss that. I don't love tapping on the screen, and especially when I'm up here, I can't, so that's annoying. However, it does look great and feel great. But if you're using this mostly in studio and not in street photography, then that's not a huge deal for you. So it depends what you're shooting. I shoot a lot outside. Enjoying this video? Cool. Couple things I'm gonna ask you to do then. One, maybe subscribe to my channel. Uh, two, listen to me talk about Squarespace for a minute. Thanks. I used Squarespace to make my website. I legitimately did, even before they paid me to do this ad. The template I chose was clean and stylish, and I literally built it myself. I really struggle with design, but Squarespace made it super easy for me to showcase my portfolio beautifully. The platform is super easy for me to customize, update regularly, and I can get analytics about the purchases made on my digital products through my online store. And I run my own business, so I don't have time to learn a whole new platform. All right, so head over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use this code right here to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks Squarespace. Now back to the video. The biggest thing to note about the X2D 100C and how it has improved from the X1D2, in my opinion, and overall is of course the autofocus. With the X1D2, it really was not there. It was slow and that's something I said in my previous video about it because it wasn't really intended for run and gun shooters. They were previously using contrast detect for their focusing. And 
and now they use phase detect, which is an improvement. It is better, it is faster. It is still gonna be slower than what you're used to with your Sony though. The intent behind these cameras is to kind of set them up in studio, set it and forget it, in which case that autofocus shouldn't be as big of a deal. With that said, you can definitely use this now for street photography, but it, it is gonna be a little slower and you, you are gonna notice that. Now with this new autofocus system, they had to develop three new lenses that work with it. So we've got a 38, a 55, and then there will be a third one that's not being shipped out just yet. So in relation to the larger sensor size, you really have to multiply these focal lengths by 0.8. So the 38 is more like 30 and the 55 is more like a 45, for example. So these new lenses do work with the new phase detect autofocus. However, if you are using a previous Hasselblad lens or any other lens, it is going to switch back to contrast detect. So you're not going to get that improvement there. Next, and this is also really exciting because this is the first Hasselblad camera to have this. We now have IBIS. We have five axis, seven stop image stabilization. And that means when you're shooting with a really slow shutter, so even if you drop it down to like one over five, your image is still going to be really sharp. And I will mention exactly how this stacks up to the GFX 100. S in a minute. Now the EVF has also been upgraded to a 5.76 megapixel viewfinder. So that is awesome. You're also going to get, and this is one of my favorite parts about the camera, you're going to get one terabyte of internal storage with this. And that is crazy because now when you're writing to, I wanna say card, but when you're taking your photo, there's literally zero processing time between actually taking the photo and waiting for it to be ready again because it has literally one terabyte of internal storage. So chances are you will rarely need to even put in a card, but in case you do, it does have a CF Express card slot and that is awesome. If you're like me, you're probably wondering how the Hasselblad X2D100C stacks up to the GFX 100 and that's when I went on a deep dive. One of the main differences here is the autofocus. The autofocus with the Fuji is going to be better. It just is. It has face detect. It has continuous autofocus. I have a D-pad. I have ways to move my focus around easily, whereas on the Hasselblad, I have to continuously touch the screen. And that's just, that's kind of annoying when you're running gun shooting. Another thing to note between these two cameras is that the Hasselblad has leaf shutter. So what that means is you can't adapt any other lenses to suit this camera. But with Fuji, you can. And then another obviously massive factor that you're wondering why I haven't even said yet, Fuji is considerably cheaper. The Hasselblad is almost double the price. That says everything right there. Fuji can also shoot video, the Hasselblad does not, but you are getting the Hasselblad color science, which everybody knows and loves. And there is something to be said about the build quality of the Hasselblad, like it feels expensive. It is made with aluminum and the Fuji is just, it, it's a little more plastic it just doesn't feel quite as premium of an experience. I love shooting with the Hasselblad. It feels amazing. When I consider myself whether I shoot more photo or video, lately I'm shooting way more photo, so I'm a photographer first. I would love to have this camera, but is it worth it based on the price point when the Fuji can basically do everything? It just depends on your needs and obviously your budget at the end of the day. I can 100% understand why someone would want this Hasselblad X2D camera. It is amazing. I do love shooting with it, but compared to the GFX 100S, I have to say it kind of, you know, it's a little more bang for your buck, a lot more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it or if there's something you hated or I didn't mention, oh my gosh, drop it low in the comments. I love to read those especially. Um, and if you're not subscribed, please <laughs> subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Did you hear a drip? <laughs> what?
I don't know. Ew. 